you hear the Imam recite Alhamdulillah, we, I hope and I believe that that is the practice of every Imam in Ahmadiyyat that he says Bismillah Rahman Rahim as he rises and then starts reciting Alhamdulillah. The reason why we still stick to this habit is that we have inherited this from a practice of the previous Hazrat Musim Wasallam and the following Khulafa. So I don't find myself authorized to change that practice despite the fact that the practice of reciting Bismillah aloud is also permissible and in Jamaat Ahmadiyya there have been people who have been doing it and none objected against them. I have a case to quote from my own family members, from my maternal side I mean, Hazrat Sayyid Bilila Shah Sahib, he used to recite, when he went to Arabia and remained there for a while, he changed his habits, ordinary habits, according to the Arabs. And because they are Shafis who always recite Bismillah Rahman Rahim loudly in before Surah Al Fatiha, he started doing it. Hazrat Muslim all knew it, every other Sahabi knew it. None ever censured him for this. None ever prevented him from leading the Juma prayer or other prayers while they knew that he would say Bismillah loudly. So the attitude is that of magnanimity and large heartedness. But still, if I start that practice as Khalifatul Masih, this could be, first of all, I don't put myself up to it as if I know better than the previous ones, you know. That reminder of my humility would not permit me to do that, although personally I prefer it. Because, why I prefer it is because many an Imam of the present generations may forget that the well-learned and well-taught I am always say Bismillah even if they don't recite it loudly. So that is my preference why I, I do it. I feel, feel it. But uh, I have told you my limitations and I simply can't find myself up to changing the tradition which I have inherited from the past uh, years of Ahmadiyyat. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Hazur, referring to the two surahs of the Holy Quran, uh, where Almighty God, after explaining the signs of the latter days in Surah Zilzal and Surah Al Adiyat, Almighty God says, Bi anna rabbaka awha laha. And at the end of the... Uh, they are not in both the surahs. Yes. No, it is one... In uh, it is in Zilzal. Zilzal, no, yes. Bi anna rabbaka awha laha. Right. Then in the next surah, it is inna rabbahum behim yawma izillah khabir. Yes. Shall we take these two as glad tidings of the advent of the Imam Adi? I think this is a question we should have been better, better asked after my Quran class. And uh, such questions relating to the commentary on certain verses and uh, elucidation of certain points in the Holy Quran should be asked in a different type of forum, I believe personally. Because maybe I require to refresh my uh, study of the context. In this case I don't, I know, but it is possible. So that is why I feel it is better to ask such serious questions which, which relate to some difficult points of the commentary of the Quran in the forum of the Quran class or uh, they may be sent to me in writing or they can also be asked during our question answer sessions during Juma in Urdu and question answer sessions uh, which uh, we televise on Sundays for the English speaking. But for this forum I think it will be 
going slightly out of the normal set procedure. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum, Hazur. I have uh, two small questions leading on from uh, some of the uh, question answer sessions right. I heard on MTA. One is regarding the eating of pork. And you have eating of pork. Pork, yes. Right, right. And you have uh, put forward, amongst other things, two reasons why, two traits, uh, which are homosexuality and right, cannibalism. Right. Now, regarding cannibalism, doesn't that also uh, apply to fish? I mean, you know, people have said to me, why? Yes, I understand. I understand the point. What I thought I had made clear has been completely missed. For an animal to be carnivorous is not objectionable. But for an animal which is vegetarian to suddenly become carnivorous of the worst type, this is odd. And that is what I mentioned with relation to the pig's habit. Pig is a vegetarian, but it has a very ugly habit which uh, is impossible to ignore that when pigs own infants die or the young ones die it devours them and eats them up and when some of its own kind dies it eats them up so what I had pointed out was that despite the fact that the beasts of the jungle are uh, created with this, you know, this intuitive habit of eating flesh. It's no crime on their part. This is how the God has made them. But even they, when one of them dies, do not eat his flesh. <coughs> the wolves never eat the flesh of wolves. The lions and the tigers and other beasts of jungle never touch the flesh of their own kith and kin, of their own kind. So this stood out as an ugly habit among the pigs that they do not eat normally the flesh of any animal. But when it comes to their own dead, they begin to eat their flesh. So it's a habit which is you know, ugly and unique in that animal and against which a pro protest has to be registered. So although the Holy Quran has not, not made it clear why the flesh of pig is forbidden, yet pondering over the possibilities, I s made this as a suggestion, which may be right, may be wrong, but this is one of my s the suggestions which I put forward. Thank you. Uh, se second small. MTA International, reaching the corners of the earth.